there's no need to get tense. Relax, reflex, condense. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Welcome to the final video in my Antique Radio Restoration Series. Our Emerson 108 smashed cabinet has been restored and the chassis has been rebuilt and aligned. At this point, we just need to take care of a few final touches and do the final assembly. And at the end of this video, I'll demonstrate the radio playing and you can decide if the restoration was a success. Many old radios use strings to connect the dial knob to the variable condenser and pointer, but our radio uses a string-free system. It's comprised of two wheels. One is copper and the other plastic. The plastic wheel fits into a groove in the copper wheel, and when the dial knob and copper wheel turn, friction causes the plastic wheel to also turn. The plastic wheel is attached by a shaft to the variable condenser in the chassis and also to the dial pointer needle. So when the knob is turned, the dial and variable condenser are moved at the same rate. I began by polishing the various parts of the dial assembly. I then added a drop of oil to the copper wheel's shaft and installed it using a nut from behind. Next, the plastic friction wheel was inserted into the groove of the copper wheel and mounted to its shaft. I used super glue to reattach the dial backing plate to the lamp assembly and reinstalled it to the chassis. To prevent shorts, I dressed the bulb socket with heat shrink and reattached it to the chassis. Next, I used the tiny brass rivet to attach the dial to the backing plate. I used a small socket to push the rivet into place. The delicate pointer was cleaned up with some metal polish and attached to the dial shaft. The interior of the cabinet appeared to have had some type of protection installed in one corner. This is often done to protect the cabinet from heat or light leakage from the lamp. This makes sense in our radio as that's the side where the power tube resides and it creates the greatest heat. To offer some protection, I cut a few pieces of adhesive foil to size and inserted them where the old protection appeared to have been. I had removed the paper serial number label to protect it during the restoration. I removed it from the protective wrapper I made and glued it back to the chassis. It was now time to slide the chassis into the cabinet. The fuse I installed didn't fit under the chassis, so I installed it on top. I had to carefully guide the fuse assembly wire as I slid the chassis and cabinet together. The chassis and cabinet are held together by four screws on the bottom, which also serve as feet. One of the metal and felt feet was missing, so I made one using a rubber bumper and screw. And here you can see the four feet installed in place. I then gave the back panel a quick polish, threaded the power cable through the lower right hole, and attached it with the six screws. And for a nice touch, I used two protective felt washers on the volume and tuning shafts before installing the knobs. At the end of a restoration, it's always fun to look back at all the old shabby parts that we replaced. On the left, you can see the old resistance cord, long wire antenna, rusted screws, and some dried out rubber grommets. In the middle are the capacitors and resistors we replaced, and the old cardboard backing for the speaker grill cloth. To the right is the old grill cloth, and just above, the old tubes. From every angle, I hope you'll agree, our restored radio is absolutely beautiful. Even for me, it's hard to believe it once looked like this. My only disappointment with the restoration is the plastic dial window, which, despite my best efforts, I couldn't restore to new condition. From years of heat and grime, it's now permanently clouded with a dark orange cast. It makes it difficult to see the dial, and the light from the dial lamp barely penetrates. Perhaps someday I'll find and replace it with one in better condition. Thanks to everyone who's joined me for some or all of the videos in this series. Please keep those comments coming and subscribe to my channel to stay updated. I've got a lot more great stuff to show you. Take a look and listen now to a quick demonstration and let me know what you think. I'll see you soon.